from how the Ministry of Health, as well as other medical uh, practitioners and stakeholders have handled what we're dealing with right now, do we have the capacity moving forward to deal with this fourth wave that is going, probably going to be more serious than what we have? Maybe if I start with you, Kenneth. Um, I'll say we have the capacity. Yes. But the capacity will depend on us how we behave and how we treat this disease. Otherwise, if we don't behave well, we don't treat it well, it might overwhelm, overwhelm us. But I know uh, with the, by, by just taking the necessary precautions, we are able to handle it. All right. Now, Prof, as I give you the opportunity to answer on the same, you lead a crop of students who have also been affected by this pandemic in a major way, and I believe you've put in place different mechanisms in school to see to it that they're also absorbed into the market once they leave the learning institution. In terms of capacity, are they well equipped even moving into the market to deal and operate in this new wave? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, as a training, uh, mid-level training college, specifically for medical health uh, related courses, um, we have ensured that we immediately when we had the first uh, report of COVID-19 last, last year, 2020 in March, as a college we moved through the speed that is required, get the information that is required and we have actually incorporated into our curriculums so that every student, no matter which course they are undertaking, be it health records, be it clinical medicine, be it uh, ophthalmology, we ensure that we give them the prerequisites that are required to handle some of these cases that arise. Uh, if you look at COVID-19 per se, it is not uh, very new. I mean, just like any other coronavirus within that family, which we have al always been training our students in terms of prevention and ensuring that they are protected because when you are dealing with patients, every and any time you are exposed. So the first thing is that being the frontline workers, yeah. we ensure that they get the requisite information before they move into the market. All right. Now, it's quite evident, not necessarily in Kenya alone, but globally, that the pandemic has taken a huge toll on countries, especially financially. And we've even seen for a situation in Kenya, right here, different counties trying to put in place different mechanisms to actually help them deal with the pandemic moving forward. Now, there is the issue of partnerships and what the Ministry of Health has been doing to see to it that different sectors are actually cushioned against this. Do we have any substantial partnerships courtesy of the Ministry of Health that we've seen have a major impact on dealing with the pandemic? Uh, if you recall very well, when this pandemic was reported for the first, first time, yeah. you, they, not only the ministry, it is the state, really pulled all the resources that are available. Uh, a national team was formed, uh, compromising of various professionals, starting from uh, medical doctors, uh, professionals in terms of epidemiologists, infection uh, control specialists. You look at researchers, bring all the partnerships across the various sectors. Yes. In training, the universities, the research institutions came together. And you, we need to appreciate what that coordination has made it possible. Uh, look at the issues of uh, the vaccines uh, that as a country, through the coordination of the Ministry of Health, has moved with, with speed to ensure that we have the vaccines. It may not have gone across the country as quickly as we wanted, but remember that the demand was everywhere globally. Okay. Uh, our main source was from India, and when the third wave uh, was noted there. Of course, there were limitations in that. India wanted to make sure that it is also vaccinating its citizens. All right. And those are some of the challenges. But from where I sit, uh, we have actually partnered even with the, the Ministry of Health ourselves. We trained all the personnel across the counties to be able to provide the vaccines. Our facilities, which are spread across this country, yeah. were utilized by the ministry. That is a clear indication that there are partnerships right. within and outside of this country. And okay. that's why we are able to manage. Um, I know we'll talk later on in terms of what we have done with Cradian as, yeah. as KMTC, but those are a few of the partnerships that has made us right. to be able to uh, mitigate the, the effect. Because if you look at uh, Kenya being where we are, 
I think we have done very well. All right. Well, talking of partnerships, let me just come to you, Kenneth. You're the managing director of Gradient um, Health Systems Africa and came to see, as he has mentioned, have partnered with you and you've actually launched a simulation lab. Maybe just break it down to us what this facility is all about. Um, but probably before I, I go to simulation lab, uh, I will say that uh, we have also had a, a very strong partnership with the government. Yeah. Uh, we partnered with the government to supply uh, several, uh, actually 100 ventilators, and then we went ahead and partnered in developing a capacity building uh, curriculum so that we can be able to train health workers. Because when pandemic came, all of us wanted to have ICUs, but the personnel were not there. Yeah. And so the, all, if they were there, they were very few. So uh, after distributing the machines, we uh, ensured that we develop a curriculum with the assistance of, uh, from Kenya uh, Society of, uh, of Anesthesia and Critical Care, Society, um, Critical Care Society of Kenya so that we can be able to uh, train the health workers, yes. can be able to empower the nurses, the clinical officers who probably might have trained in, in critical care but have not worked in a critical care environment for a very long time. And so there was this refresher training and uh, of course, um, also assisting them to be able to uh, 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 support uh, the, their, their hospitals. Yes. Now, uh, in doing that, we realized that there were some side challenges because training during COVID is very complicated. And so we uh, borrowed some of the technologies that we have seen in other countries, yeah. especially on simulation training. And so we partnered with KMTC, which actually gave us space, and we really want to thank them for that. And we brought up equipment, we innovated, brought up equipment. And the first thing we did is to ensure that we trained the doctors who now became the trainers and the facility so it's useful because now people are being trained. Yeah. Uh, and simulation actually, uh, probably as the, doc, uh, the prof will explain, is more of bringing that uh, natural environment uh, to, a, to, to a trainee in artificial way. Okay. that you have this artificial uh, patient and you have all the scenarios just like you will have it in the world and then you develop the capacity and the confidence of the of, of, of that of the trainee so that they can be able to handle the patient confidently when they are they are in the world so i think this partnership has really helped to boost our capacity uh, as a as a country also. Okay, well, when you look at simulation, just as you've talked about, this is bringing in the artificial aspect of the real situation so that you actually trade on this. But critics have also argued that it takes away the natural and the real thing because you're talking about doctors and medical practitioners who are going to handle real patients. So how would you answer to this? Probably uh, the critics might not have been in a simulation lab. Yeah. Because when you're in a simulation lab, all the parameters, all the challenges in the actual world yes. exist there in the lab. Uh, you have the patient which can feel the pain, although it's artificial patient. You have this patient which can die, though it's artificial. And you have this pressure because you are timed at how fast you can be able to uh, deal with the patient. Okay. You have those people who will distract you from doing what you are required because that's what you expect will happen in the, in the actual world. And this enables you to develop that confidence because the truth is the patient will die who is which is a mannequin yes but eventually uh you'll be told what you did wrong and then you develop this confidence then because you'll do it over and over and over the, the right. assessor will ensure that you do it over and over until you are able to do it confidently where you, when you are in the field and so when you go to the field because the same machines you are going to use here are the same machines you are going to use in the hospital i mean in the ward so world. you know how to parade them you have this confidence and you can be able to all right yeah. prof uh as came to see you have more than 40 branches across the nation and this is a project that has been launched right here in the cbd what are we looking at in terms of rolling this technology and actually ensuring that most if not all of the campuses get access to it um as uh, came to see what we have done is that we have a very robust uh, uh, ICT facility, yeah. which cuts across all our 71 campuses, spread all over this country. And what we have done is with that is that if you look at the number of campuses which are offering, uh, let me use nursing for instance, we have 50 campuses at the moment. And what we have done with this new technology is that we will be able to network, which will be real time, in that when the demonstrations are being done here in Nairobi, okay. which is in CPD, 
will be able, that student who is in Lodwa or Musambweni, will be able to visualize and actually go through with the, the tutors in terms of what is happening. The only difference is that uh, this will be video televised vis-a-vis -vis the ones who are even in Nairobi. And even if the ones, even the ones in Nairobi, what we have done is that uh, the space and the equipment cannot fit all, of, all, all the students we require. So there is actually a classroom yes. where we have already connected so that when the, op the operations are being done, be it um, cesarean sections, be it uh, reviving in terms of how to use ventilators and so on, right. uh, more students will be able to see the real situation. And the, the advantage of this is the fact that the same equipment, of course, if you look at the earlier scenario, is that we were not having a proper um, facility, for instance, where you can actually simulate what happens in a theater. Okay. Uh, because what we used to do is that we are using mannequins, yes, but it is not real life. All right. Th that they actually, they may not, they are artificial, but you are able to actually do even blood transfusion, okay. monitor everything that is happening, and that gives the advantage, and we can actually transmit the same information to the students at that end. But what we are also looking at, and we, we are discussing with uh, our friend here, yes. is that instead of just having one in Nairobi, we can look at the previous eight provinces, okay. uh, the initial one, Nakuru, uh, talk of Mombasa, Kisumu. Yes, uh, if yeah. we, can have those, we can have those ones, then we can, we can make them regionalized. So that once in a while, uh, there will be an exchange program. All right. If a student is in Siaya, that student can be able to move to Kisumu, Kisumu and actually see, see okay. once in a while, but not every day. All right. uh, that, All right. And that ensures that we have the same quality across. Because if we look at uh, the way we do our examinations, they are the same. Final qualifying examinations cuts across. Okay. It is one exam. If they want to be registered by the Nursing Council of Kenya, they do the same exam. All right. That ensures quality across in terms okay. of training. Well, let's now look at judging from both responses. And I want to give the two of you this opportunity to answer on the same. Judging from your response is that this looks like a very capital and resource in, uh, intensive exercise from purchasing the equipment and also just ensuring the sustainability of the whole program. Are there any mechanisms that have been put in place to ensure that this goes the long run and not that this is going to serve for a short-term purpose? Maybe a serving you, Kenneth. Yeah, um, in our MOU with KMTC, yeah. we are going to support that facility for the next five years. Should anything break, we'll be able to uh, support it. Uh, should any machine uh, develop a problem, we'll be able to fix it or bring a new one uh, so that the, we are able to have this up to five years. After five years, we can probably we can talk again and see how we can be able to support that. All right. Because as Gradient, uh, one of the, uh, our pillars is training. Okay. We ensure that uh, people can be able to uh, understand the machine they are using, understand the, the place where they are, because when you are confident with the machine and, and, and whatever you're doing, you're, uh, the result will always be the best. Okay, Prof, he's talked about the partnership for five years, and I know you're in talks with the government as well. Any plans? What happens next after the five years so that we have the program running? Uh, if you look at the, the input that has been put into this facility, by the way, if you look, if you do the actual cost and probably can give the figures, yeah. it may not be that expensive as people look at. Because we are looking at, at the end of the day, what kind of people are we producing? Because I don't think we can uh, value life that can be lost just because of negligence yeah. or substandard in terms of training. Okay. And as KMTC, apart from the five years that uh, we have entered into the MOU, as the time comes, we, we are also budgeting every year to ensure that the moment they leave, we should be able to, to maintain those facilities. Because even currently, yeah. we're also buying other facility, uh, equipment for the college, which we are maintaining through our collection from uh, tuition fee and also support from the, the, government, the government through okay. our parent ministry. So it's an investment to me that is what that we must ensure that it runs. And I can assure you, when you look at the demand of the training, yes. we'll be able to sustain these equipments. And I like the five years, because technology changes very fast. Very fast, right. all right. I'm sure by the time five years <laughs> lapses, sure. yeah. we'll be telling our colleagues now, this is obsolete. How do we move for another arrangement so that we have new equipments 
that are actually in tandem with the changes that are happening in terms of technology. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Of course, a beautiful initiative right there just to see to it that we have better staff moving forward and to help us with this COVID-19 situation and not necessarily COVID-19, but also just future health-related pandemics. That's been all of for us right here on The Daily Brief. Thank you for keeping me company, but don't touch that dial. I'm coming right up next with K24 Newscut in just a short while.